being a potter takes patience. It takes much skill turning something into an art. It even takes the ability and the lack of OCD-ness to become messy. We just saw in the video, the potter might have to repeat himself time and time again to get that pot to be crafted the way he originally intended it to be. Potters never throw away the clay. They take that clay and if it gets marred and muddled, they reshape it, they recraft it, they add water, they reuse and they recycle. They reshape and reshape again. Working with clay takes a lot of work and dedication. We are the clay. For us to get to heaven, there's only one way. That way is for us to rely on God as our potter today. This story, this account in Jeremiah chapter 18, is about our day-to-day -day experiences every single day. Now we might not rely on pottery and clay pots as much as they did back then in Jeremiah's day or even in Jesus' day. But to understand this account of Jeremiah and God telling Jeremiah to go to this potter's house, we need to understand life in Jeremiah's day. Pottery was priceless. Pottery was essential. Without pottery, cities wouldn't have existed. For centuries, even thousands of years, it was pottery that made much of living possible. Think of all the containers that you have that are either made out of plastic or glass. Two of which they didn't have back then to shape into the jars and containers and storage. Now imagine all those as pottery. That's what they would have been back in the day. It was, the pottery is what made it possible for people to draw water from a well to draw it from a river, to draw it from any water source. It was how they stored their water and how they drank their water. It was how they stored their food and tried to preserve it a little bit, maybe at least longer than an hour, so it didn't just have to sit out in the open. It provided some type of shelter for their food and water and some type of source to be able to carry it and store. This story about the potter and his wheel and the clay is all about our day-to-day -day experiences, our necessities to live. And now God says, we are the clay. We are the pottery. The church is the pottery. God's people are the pottery. As I mentioned earlier, today is Reformation Sunday, the first Sunday of end time. And Reformation helps us focus on why we are really here as Christians, as Lutherans, as followers and believers in Christ. That's why we here are here today. God as the potter has reshaped his church. The church ebbs and flows in the truth. It becomes marred and muddled in all the midst of this world. But God's church never fails. God also needs to constantly reshape that which makes up his church, the marred and the muddled clay, which is made up of us sinful human beings. That's us. There's not a moment in our lives where we are not the clay. But there's also never a moment where God is not the potter. God wants to be involved with us and interact with us every single day. Listen to this quote. Faith is not a leap out of the everyday, but it's a plunge into its depths. Let me read that or say that to you once again. Faith is not a leap out of the everyday, but it's a plunge into its depths. 
problem is that even though God wants to interact with us and be involved with us every day and keep his hands on us to form us and to reshape us, we are difficult to work with. Clay is always difficult to work with. Jeremiah, in chapter 18, we see Jeremiah go to the potter's house. Go down to the potter's house and watch the potter at his wheel. We see how Jeremiah witnessed a very basic illustration from God through the potter about how difficult the clay is. But the potter doesn't give up. The potter keeps his hands on the clay. Jeremiah knew all about the clay that resisted the hand of the potter. Because that's exactly whom God had called Jeremiah to prophesy to. The difficult clay. The people who were resisting God, who were turning their backs on him. And Jeremiah was the one to prophesy to them to be and remain in God's hand so that he can shape them. Not them shape themselves. But the people resisted him. They were a stubborn people. They were a stiff-necked people. They were undependable. They were cracked pottery. They had many imperfections in their lives. Just like Jeremiah did too. This passage is filled with hope. But it is also filled with warning. You and I have imperfections too. God is constantly reshaping us because we are the clay that frustrate him to change its direction. As the quality of clay determines what the potter can do with it and the outcome of that shape of the pot, so the quality of people determines what the outcome is. God's going to shape us into as his church, what he's going to do with us, the clay. Here's where I ask for your participation. And yes, I know you're Lutherans. And I know a lot of times you don't like to say anything during a sermon. I'm giving you permission. I'm actually encouraging you to be involved for a moment, not just listening, but actually with your mouths and your heads. You ever frustrate God? Nod your head. I thought that might encourage you a little bit. You ever take a path that God was leading you on and turn it into a path for your own selfish ambition? Say, Lord have mercy. You ever want to do the right thing? Try to fight off all those temptations of sin, but in the end, you end up giving into it anyways that is working onto you? If so, say, Lord reshape me. The Lord is leading us to repentance today. He is asking us to confess our sins and to turn away from them. That's repentance. And repentance means if you're headed in one direction, you turn completely the opposite. It's a 180 degree change. We turn in the opposite direction from our sins. Not just say we will, but actively through our actions, showing that we are turning away from all those sins. One of the most dumb and stupid things that we can do is to walk around feeling guilty for our sins. God offers forgiveness. Why are we so stubborn? Because we are difficult clay. But God provides a way out. He softens that difficult clay that doesn't want to be softened. He says, I want to use you. And then that clay can either say, I reject your hands, Lord. Or I can just stay there residing in the hands of the Lord to craft them. The Lord adds the water to keep it soft. And he adds the waters from our baptism to reshape us and to remold us. 
He turns us from what was once marred and muddled mess into one of his magnificent masterpieces. He is forming us every day into his child, reformed, reshaped, and forgiven to serve a wonderful purpose. That purpose may vary from person to person. What is your, what is it that you need to do to cooperate with God and his good plans for you? Maybe for you, it means learning to forgive. Is that a problem? Sometimes you hold on to a grudge too long. Maybe for you or someone else, it might be to get rid of some past hurts. Others, it might be learning to deal with your anger issues. I can't tell you what you specifically are struggling with and what God is tugging at your heart today. You know, though, God is calling you to turn away from the th these things and to once again be reshaped by him on the potter's wheel. This story is also about an invitation to trust the potter. If the clay remains marred and muddled, if it remains a mess, it will never be turned into the magnificent masterpiece that the potter, God himself, intended for us to be in the end. But if the clay trusts the potter, if the clay submits itself and allows itself to be shaped by the potter, molded and formed into this art form that God had already originally planned for you, it will turn into that magnificent masterpiece. God can do to you and he can do through you what you could never do for yourself in a hundred years. It's only the potter who can take what is broken and fix it. It's only God, the potter, who can take what is wounded and heal it. If you are impure in some way, let the potter purify you. If you are incomplete in some way, let the potter touch you and make you whole. If there is something ugly in your life, then let the potter take it and turn it into something beautiful. If you are messed up in some way, trust me, I think we all can agree that we're messed up in some way. I don't want you to despair. I want you to hear everything that we've already said. But I want you to get this too. Verse 4. But the pot he was reshaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. You catch that? Even though the clay was marred, it was still in his hands. Hear this today, dear friends. Let this sink deep into your heart and into your soul and remain there forever. Even when we feel battered and derailed, we are still in his hands. Even when we can't do things and we do things that frustrate the potter, and we still do them while still in his hands. Even when we blow it, we blow it in his hands. God is not afraid of us making mistakes. Our mistakes don't phase God. God is not afraid of us having setbacks in our lives. He is not afraid of us if we suffer at times. But if we suffer, if we mess up, if we have setbacks, we are still in his hands. God is not going to give up on you. 
God doesn't give up on his church. That is why he reshapes us and he reforms us so that we stay focused on him, focused on his words that he has spoken to us from the Bible and rely on him to come to us in the sacraments of Holy Communion and Holy Baptism. The potter starts over with the same clay. God keeps us in his hands and he uses that same clay, kneading us and pushing us and pulling us so that we turn into the masterpieces that he had originally planned and designed for us to be. But through it all, we're still in his hands. The potter knows what he is doing with the clay. God, our master potter, has promised to never waste our experiences, whether they are good or bad, but he uses them to shape you, to mold you, and to form you. He recycles them, and he reshapes them, and turns them into magnificent masterpieces, not only beautiful, but useful. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, O oh power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me. Savior divine. God is the potter. We are the clay. God is going to keep working on you, reshaping you, molding you, while we're spinning there on the potter's wheel of life. Daily, in our experiences, he is working on us. Even while we may be difficult to work with. But through it all, we hear this potter's call for us to trust in him while we are in his hands. God is not giving up on us. And he's not going to. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all our understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.